Hi, I'm Sean Smith. This is Sean Smith Photos, where I edit street photography and occasional travel photos with On One Photo Raw. Uh, so today I'm looking at a photo that I took about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, just some guy walking down the street. It's snowing. He's got a cup of coffee. Uh, the plan today is to show you five different ways to convert your photo to black and white using On One Photo Raw. Let's get to it. All right, so uh, I did some basic edits in the develop module, uh, no noise and a little bit of playing around with the sliders here. Uh, so the first way that you can convert your photo to black and white is just using the saturation slider right here. And it's very, it's very basic. You don't get a lot of control over what colors are dark or things like that, but it works. And, you know, we convert it back and uh, that's method number one, very simple. I often use this just to get an idea if I think the photo will look good in black and white or not. Uh, sometimes I'm not sure. So the second method is to do the same thing, but instead you're in the locals panel panel. And here we are. And where is it? It's, uh, where is the, I know it's in here. I just can't find it right now. Ah, there it is. It's at the bottom saturation slider. Oh, and I need to invert the mask because I'm on the local and it's, masked out by default. So there we go. We have now converted this to black and white. Oh, and the default for uh, locals is exposure minus one. So you, you just need to reset that to get it back. And then we saturation. So this effectively works the same way as just doing it in the develop tab. Perhaps you're making some changes later on and you're in here and you're going to use it. I really don't see too many people using this option. <clears throat> um, a third method, an effect such as color enhancer, cross process, or sunshine. And each of these filters has an, a saturation slider, so it would operate similar to what we looked at previously. Uh, let's add the color enhancer slider just to test this. And we can see here saturation slider. I can bump it up or I could just remove it. And this is working exactly like the first three methods. It's just not a lot of control with it. So let's take a look at a fourth option. And that fourth option would be to use the LUTs filter. So we're going to open up the LUTs filter. And it adds uh, this default one by when you open it up. And then you've got all of these in here. And you can see that some of them are black and white. And the easiest way to filter to get the black and white ones is to use the category. So Default is color pop, and we're going to switch it to black and white. And then we've got looks like a, a choice of about 10 different ones. So, Amadol, and just like with any drop down in On One Photo Raw, once you open it, you can use the up and down keys on your keyboard to cycle through and look at the preview. And, you know, we, we've got a lot of different styles. And let's say that um, I, I like the warm ink. Let's go with warm ink. So I got the warm ink. And then I'm in here and it's already black and white. And then I have this contrast slider. So I could increase the contrast or reduce the contrast. 
I could, the saturation doesn't work because this is a black and white photo. Uh, it's just been converted. So it's a little bit different than using the straight on str um, saturation slider from develop or uh, certain effects or the local tab. We do get this option for extra contrast. But I, I've used this one a couple of times uh, because, you know, there's some interesting effects you can get out of it. But what I typically do and what I suspect that most people are doing is to open up the black and white effect. And then in here we have a whole ton of different black and white settings. And let's find one that uh, I like for this photo. Uh, oh, Chrome is pretty nice here. Usually Chrome adds a little bit of color to the photo, like a color shading, like a tint. Um, not sepia, but similar to that, that I don't like. But on, on this photo, this looks pretty good. Coffee's got a real sepia look to it. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, we could cycle through all these, but I'm going to just go with Chrome. And then in here, you have all of these different sliders that you can play around with. And one thing I like to do is, if I can't remember what colors were featured on the scene, I'll just turn it on and off. And I can see I've got this kind of lime green and this red, and maybe I want to make them pop a little bit more if we switch it back here, we can see the red and his jeans are kind of blending into each other. So I could choose to brighten the jeans, but they're already super dark. Or I could brighten the jacket, which is lighter. And I'm going to go with brightening the jacket. And I'm just going to grab the red slider. I'm going to pull that up. And you can see right away that it's a lot brighter and we can see the detail in his jacket a lot more. And then I'm going to look for the, the green slider and I'm going to darken it because I want it to add some contrast here with the snow. We've got this white background and we just want this, I just want this a little bit darker. And furthermore, you can go in to the tone and you can adjust your contrast. And a lot of times I found that the different settings have different contrast levels. So you might like the general look of it, but you want more or less contrast. Come in here and tweak that. I'm going to drop the contrast down a bit. I'm going to increase the brightness a little bit. I want it a little bit brighter. And I want the whites to be a little bit whiter. And I'm going to hit the J key. Uh, to check my clipping. Uh, effectively, no clipping. That's fine. I mean, there's a couple little spots. And there is our fifth and best way to convert to black and white. And like I did in an earlier video, I want to enhance the snow a little bit more. So I'm going to grab dynamic contrast. And then I'm going to pull up on the smalls. And I like that. And let's turn this on and off. Yeah, pulling up on the smalls, we get a little bit more of this snow featuring in the scene. I'm going to pull back on it a little bit. It looks a little bit fake, even though it's not. Uh, the, clearly, the snow is in the scene. Mm. Maybe drop down on the mediums. Yeah, so I, I think that helped the super crunchiness that was going on in the guy's jacket. Okay, so we got that and let's just polish off this with a vignette. And let's try a big softy. And then I want to see how this will look with a white one. So I'm going to just Go to the white vignette, which is basically like a big softy. And I'm going to pull back on the opacity on that a little bit and reduce. Let's reduce the feather so we can see this. And then there we go. And put 
put the feather back. There we go. I don't normally do white ones, but I think the this white one really enhances this wintry scene. And on and off, check the J key one last time. I'm happy, and I'm gonna call that an edit. If you like the video, don't forget to hit subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Vero, and my website, seansmith.net. Links are in the description below. Uh, thank you to the people who followed me on Instagram after the last video. Hey, I followed you back. Uh, if you want to follow me, I will follow you back on Instagram and Vero. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you all for your comments. And I hope you have a happy holiday season. And I'll see you in the new year. Maybe I'm making a video next week. I'm not sure yet. Anyways, thank you for watching.